Welcome to this Tuesday's topic on self-sabotage. I am Ashley Anderson, registered dietitian, personal trainer, and owner of Move Fully Nourished, where we specialize in nutrition and exercise coaching, helping active adults achieve stress-free, realistic, and sustainable fat loss using a mindful and intuitive eating approach. Joined by the lovely... Hey guys, I'm Natalie Forster. I'm an integrative dietitian. And I help women use the power of nutrition to master autoimmunity naturally. There are many ways to define self-sabotage. So that's what our topic for today is. And it really depends on what you're applying it to. So it can be in relationship to yourself, relationship with others, or just generally how you move through the world. So in today's discussion, we are applying the term self-sabotage to the ways you choose to nourish yourself. The definition we are working within is surrounded by deconstructive thoughts, actions, and patterns that prevent you from reaching your highest potential. Perfect. So if you think about this, we're going to visualize this scenario. If you make a promise to yourself that you are going to make these changes for the betterment of your health, you knuckle down, you're following a strict set of diet rules, and you're determined to stay focused and on plan. Then life happens, right? You have a stressful experience. Your child gets sick. Your uncle has a heart attack. Your boss yells at you. You have a disagreement with your spouse and you feel overwhelmed, anxious, and upset. And you throw in the towel and you say, screw it. Like uh, this is aligned with the mentality we see with our clients is they 100% or 0%. It's the all or nothing mindset that, that causes us to feel trapped. So then you essentially discard the diet, the goals, and you put in place um, that you had put in place and lose focus. And then you eat off plan, quote unquote, right? And you feel guilty, overwhelmed, anxious, and upset. And the self-sabotaging cycle continues. Yeah, Ashley, that visualization is, is on point. So that's pretty much what happens. So the self-sabotage cycle is a function of the unconscious mind. When you get triggered by life happening, as Ashley described in visualization, um, and you feel the flood of overwhelming emotions, it's easier to shut down and rely on conditioned patterns um, versus remaining in that conscious mind to confront or welcome in the discomfort. So we have this conditioned pattern of food being a numbing agent, right? It can also be a form of therapy, but ultimately when used um, irresponsibly, it can be a way to um, suppress emotion. So we call that an emotion suppressant. And one aspect of self-sabotage is emotional eating. So emotions, right? These, um, they tend to store deep down in the body and they will rise when you're ready to address them. So as emotions come up or rise within the body, this can be an extreme form of discomfort, right? Um, so at this point in time, there's something we have not yet addressed. However, it's important to acknowledge emotions as temporary entities. If you can allow them to come up and sit with them, right? they will eventually move on, thus keeping you clear and free. Um, but if you choose to avoid the discomfort and instead suppress the emotions with food, you can perpetuate the pattern because these emotions will continue presenting themselves until they are addressed, felt, and learned from. But here's the thing, guys. It's really, really important to, um, to know this, right? To, to really believe it is that any emotion that is trying to come up in the body is one that you are ready to handle. It's something that you can metabolize and nothing that is too big for you is going to come up. So trust that if something is bubbling, right? And there's that little bit of discomfort that if you welcome it in, you can absolutely learn from it and allow it to move on. There is so much truth in that. And I love the way that you phrase that, Natalie, because when we think about it in that way, we allow us the freedom to say that we have the power. It's almost like innately within us that a lot of times we discredit ourselves for. And to then say that we can uh, we can approach it with a different mindset and be able to say, I nothing is too big. Um, I think that also allows us the flexibility to just be more confident in our own inner self and find that peace too. Totally. So another part of that too, with these emotions, what app, what often happens if we don't address them is we start placing blame, right? So we start to place blame on others, ourselves, our situations, our environments. And then what doesn't get resolved is the true thought, emotion, or discomfort that originally was part of the equation. So the blame then shows up as sabotage 
And it really kind of wrecks your chance to learn and grow from the experience and to ultimately resolve the original issue. Yes, yes. And so I'm going to kind of trail on that. So if we go back to the original scenario of wanting to better your health and focusing on creating changes um, that honor your commitment to these health goals you've set in place, you can have all the intentions in the world and you can be two weeks into making those changes and you can be killing it. And then life happens, right? So something occurs that's catastrophic or again, elicits these emotions. And then all of these emotions come up and you revert to those old conditioned patterns. You are not at this point functioning from the conscious mind, right? At this point, you have shut up the conscious mind. You're now functioning from the subconscious or the unconscious mind. And the habits that you've been trying to build that are not yet ingrained are going to completely just, they're not part of your second nature behavior yet. So essentially they can just get tossed out the window and this is how you're going to sabotage, right? So it's that unconscious mind um, coming forward and eliciting old patterns or a place that you can function from. I think I'm getting a little off your net, or uh, Ashley, um, a place that you can function from that's kind of like a safety or security mode. Yeah, um, but what it takes is being willing, right? So the willingness to go through those uncomfortable emotions, to stay present and to stay conscious in order to honor those goals from a conscious state versus going into the conditioned patterns. And it's unfair, guys. It's really unfair to blame ourselves because at this point, you haven't really ingrained those into a new way of being, right? This is not how you, you exist without conscious thought. So it's not fair to blame ourselves, right? You're doing the work consciously, but you got to stay consistent to bring it into that subconscious state. So then it does become second nature. Exactly. So becoming that new pattern, that new habit that then starts to become imprinted and who you become. And we'll kind of get into that too. And how we help our clients really navigate through the self-sabotaging patterns. We try to create a holding space, right? A holding space for our clients to explore these emotions and how they are contributing to their own experiences, but also allowing our clients to express the emotions. Often like Natalie was saying earlier, it's like the emotions coming up, but we often tend to downregulate or depress them and push them down and don't address them or give them the space that they deserve. So mm -hmm. if we're truly allowing ourselves to feel and go through the emotions in the moment, it's really helping us to come to a resolution to break the chain of events and go through now the cycles of this is how I feel. I get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Then I sabotage myself, right? Then I feel guilty. Then mm -hmm. I'm following this cycle that I can't get out of. So what we help our clients do is break those links to figure out what the new rerouted pattern that can then become the new established foundational habits that then again, like I said, become imprinted on the experiences. And this ultimately helps you rewrite your story. So we'll kind of get into a little bit uh, of a step-by-step -step process later on and talking about how you can apply this to your life. But we also want to talk a little bit about consistency, right, Natalie? Yeah, yeah. So it really does come down to consistency, you know, and I think that's, um, or I feel that's what we really offer to our clients. We hold space for them, right, to be the biggest versions of themselves and hold them accountable um, to creating the habits that then can become second nature. So it's ultimately replacing old patterns that no longer serve them. And I see this in my practice all the time. Clients will say, dang that, this used to be really difficult for me. There was a lot of cognitive overhead when I was trying to instill this new habit um, or right, building something new. And now it just happens. I don't even need to think about it. And I'm making decisions that support me with ease, right? Like with relative ease. And so it really does come down to just that consistency. And, and really what we're doing is holding you in that space of like, hey, stay conscious with us, right? This is the pattern that you're building. We're keeping you accountable to setting that new goal. So that way it can become second nature. And uh, yeah, so we'll kind of go into the resolution, resolution and takeaways and Ashley's going to walk us through that. So what can you take away from this conversation today that will help you rewrite your story as a person who experiences self-sabotage to a person who transcends the old patterns that once served you and yet no longer do? So Ash, if you want to walk us yeah. through this stuff, Ackerman, I um, whoa. Yeah. So I often use uh, the term snack. 
And I use this as a way to offer guidance to walk you through the stages that mm-hmm. you can use to just create like a step-by-step pattern for you to um, take action with. So for example, the acronym SNACK comes into play where we talk about S standing for stop. You're pausing, you're giving yourself that space. Like even a few seconds can be the difference between following through with the self-sabotaging action or a chance to experience growth as a person, as an individual, as a human being. The N stands for notice. This is a chance for space to give you time to notice and become aware of what is happening, what's happening within you, what's happening around you. So environmentally speaking too. And then the A is accept. So accept, acknowledge, and lean into your emotions and your experiences without judgment. And that's key without judgment. So this is where we are then going to go from becoming aware and acknowledging to then becoming curious, becoming curious about what other responses that you can have to the triggers or emotions that you're experiencing. And we're going to look at this like a hot air balloon. Okay. We let the emotion rise we lean into it. We let it float. So picture this hot air balloon, right? Floating in the air. And then only after you've named it, you've acknowledged it, you've addressed the emotions that you've been experiencing without judgment, Mm -hmm. then, and you've seen it for what it is, then you can bring the balloon back down, become grounded, land softly, and then become curious about a solution that you can pivot towards in order to find a resolution to the emotion that doesn't involve food or sabotaging your goals. And then the last one is K, kindness. So responding to yourself with kindness. As humans, we are ever-changing and our reaction sometimes can catch us off guard and be surprising, but it is the information that we can use then to learn and grow from in order to find our extraordinary. So they all stand, the acronym again is SNACK, standing for S is stop, N is notice, A is acknowledge and accept, C is curious, and K is respond with kindness. I love that. I love that acronym so much. And this is one that I haven't heard before. It's new to me. And when you were talking about it, it just resonates so deeply as like a very simple way to kind of move through a process without overcomplicating it. And, you know, you can either sit down and just think about it, or you can journal it or speak it out loud and record yourself. But working through any scenario, I think that this is a a really great acronym for getting from point A to point Z or, you know, really helping you identify something and then really replace it with something that serves you. Absolutely. And something that I think a lot of our clients resonate with is being able to just have a simple step-by-step process where they can apply it. Because we, again, we're already overwhelmed, like overwhelmed, self-sabotage. We're talking about creating simplicity within complexity and being able to just, again, help you navigate through that journey. So, Natalie, how can people find you because you are an incredible integrative dietitian and work with these amazing women. And I know you have fantastic stories to share with our group today, but just so that they can learn a little bit more about you and find that information, where can they find you Nat? All right. Thanks for asking. Um, so my Instagram handle is revived underscore roots. Um, really simple. And you can also go to revivedroots.com. So On there, you can find um, different avenues to access me or more information about my programs. Awesome. And then myself at Move Fully Nourish. So Move Fully Nourish uh, and Instagram as well as movefullynourish.com. And we are, we're both accepting new clients. So we would love to help you reach your highest potential to find your extraordinary. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a fantastic rest of your day. See you.